Did you know the lymphatic system is like a one-way ticket at an airport? Let me explain. Hey guys, Organized Biology here, and today we're talking lymphatic system overview. Now, the lymphatic system, simply put, is just a drainage system for lost fluid in your body. And no, I'm not talking about sweat or urination. I'm actually talking about fluid lost at the tissues of the body, all throughout your body. And we need a way to bring that fluid back into our circulation, into our blood supply, so that we can keep our blood volume up. So if you look at the lymphatic system, all of these vessels are scattered throughout your body. And what they're going to do is they're going to drain in a one-way direction back towards some major veins. And these guys right here are called your subclavian veins. Subclavian means below the clavicle. So right below here, you actually have really big veins that drain back into the right side of the heart before getting to the lungs and then back into general circulation. Now the question is, how do we lose the fluid first off? And then how do we actually draw it back? And what's the point of all this? We're going to get to that next. So first off, let's talk about here. This is at the cellular level. So what I'm looking at, and I'm zooming in on one specific spot of lymphatic vessels that will draw the fluid out. And we're looking at the cells of the body. We're looking at the capillaries. These are capillaries. If you haven't watched my video on capillary exchange, I would like you to watch that first. This will make a lot more sense. And the goal of these capillaries is to take nutrients and oxygen from the blood and actually deliver it to the tissues. So as the blood is actually coursing this way through the capillaries, some of the fluid in the blood called plasma is actually going to leak out into this space. And that fluid is going to basically make up the space between the capillaries and the cells, which is called your interstitial fluid. So in that interstitial fluid from the capillaries, the plasma specifically, which if you don't know about plasma and all that stuff, watch this blood components video. You guys need to know this before you watch the lymphatic system. So with this, inside the interstitial fluid from the capillaries, we've got different nutrients, like I said, like oxygen, like glucose. These are things that the cells will need to make ATP energy. Okay, so very important that we get that fluid out to feed the cells. Now the question is, how do we actually push that fluid out? It's wanting to go in through these little vessels. How do we push it out? Well, this force that pushes the fluid out is called hydrostatic pressure. So hydrostatic pressure is basically the fluid pushing out on those capillaries because we're basically funneling a lot of blood into a very small space. These are only a couple micrometers wide, very, very tiny. So therefore, we're going to funnel all that fluid in here and it's going to force those vessels to expand a little bit. And you see here, there's little spaces here, openings, and these are called fenestra literally translating to window, and it'll allow that fluid to force out, okay? So what's weird is you have stuff in your blood that's literally bathing your cells. So whatever you put in your blood, whether you eat, whether you smoke, dare I say, don't smoke people or vape, all that crap is bad. But if you put it in your bloodstream, it's literally going to bathe all 30 trillion cells of your body. So decide what you want to bathe your cells in. Now, over the process of a day, there will actually be about 30 liters of fluid that will seep out of your capillaries and basically into this interstitial space. You're only made of about six liters of blood. That's a lot of fluid leaking out of your bloodstream, right? So what's interesting is immediately after, there will be something called osmotic pressure that will force a lot of that fluid back into the bloodstream. And that's going to be about 27 liters of that fluid. Now the question is, if we're getting a lot of out, so we're getting 30 liters out, 27 back in, where does that leave us? It leaves us with three liters, and it's gotta go somewhere. You see, it can't just stay here because it would build up, build up, build up, and eventually cause what's called edema, which edema just means swelling basically due to fluid in the interstitial space, in the interstitial fluid. So where do those three liters of fluid go every day? they go through your lymphatic system. So by losing fluid at the capillaries, we have to drain that fluid through the lymphatic vessels. So specifically, there will be really small vessels called lymphatic capillaries. And through the same hydrostatic force as that fluid is pushed out, they will have these small little valves, and they are one-way valves, which valves in A and P are always one way, and that fluid is going to get forced into that lymphatic capillary. And once the fluid actually gets into here, now we call this fluid lymph, which is why we name this the lymphatic system. So now remember the goal. We've got fluid in these lymphatic capillaries, and where do we want them to go? Pop quiz. 
We want them to drain back to the subclavian veins, like I said, to reintroduce that fluid back into circulation, okay? So we need a one-way ticket back to the subclavian vein. So we gotta go to the airport, right? And at any good airport, we will eventually reach what's called the TSA checkpoint, right? Now, no, in your body, there are no actual TSA agents patting you down. That would be weird. Uh, but these TSA checkpoints are actually called your lymph nodes. And you probably felt these lymph nodes before, right? They're these basically bulges of the lymphatic vessels that you see and feel maybe in your groin area, maybe under your armpit. You feel these little bumps, and those are lymph nodes. And I consider them TSA checkpoints because they will have a variety, a variety of bodyguards and security guards. These guys primarily are called lymphocytes. Break the word down, team, you know it. This means lymphatic system and site means cell. So it's literally the lymphatic system's cells. And these lymphocytes, you may have heard of them, are T cells and B cells. If you don't know about T cells and B cells, they're basically the adaptive immune cells of your body, the ones that will help you make antibodies to fight off different pathogens. So why are we having all these guys just chilling in here, as well as with a lot of other cells called leukocytes, basically your wet, uh, white blood cells? Why are all of these guys just chilling in here, just waiting for stuff to happen? Well, this is an amazing adaptation from your body because if anything seeps into here, it's kind of giving you a feel of what is in your bloodstream. And if there's like bacteria or pathogens or fungi or those nasty little buggers in your bloodstream, eventually it'll get into your lymphatic system. And that is a one-way ticket to the TSA checkpoint where these cells will basically notice any pathogen that's coming through and mount an immune response. So just like TSA, they'll pat them down and be like, you have a bacteria and we're going to start battling. So these lymphocytes will migrate to different areas, hop into the bloodstream, start making antibodies and eventually fight off that pathogen. So lymph nodes are an essential part to your immune system. Now, let's say we kill off all the bacteria and stuff like that. And now we need to get that fluid back into the subclavian veins. Well, we see that all roads lead back there. So the same thing will happen here. It'll pop up over here, dump into the subclavian vein. But I see a problem. I see a problem, especially if we're looking maybe down here in your legs or even down here in your arms. Well, in order to move fluid, you think you got to have some sort of force, right? So think about your blood, right? How is your blood moving through your vessels? Well, your heart is actively pumping, right? Pumping, and pumping, and pumping that blood through. I haven't mentioned a darn thing about a pump with your lymphatic system. And in fact, there aren't any. There's no pumps directly associated with pushing lymph back one-way ticket to the subclavian vein. So the question is, how do we move lymph, right? How do we move lymph? Well, there's about four main ways that we can think of. So let's list them real fast. Number one is going to be smooth muscle contractions. Now, this doesn't account for much of the movement, but in some of the larger lymphatic vessels, like the thoracic duct right here, we're going to have some of those smooth muscles, just like the intestines, and they're going to have these sort of pace setter cells that are going to set the pace to contract and push some of that lymph in. Basically, if you imagine a snake eating something and how that bolus basically moves through the snake through that peristaltic waves, that's the same process that'll happen with the lymphatic vessels, but those aren't found in every single lymphatic capillary. So how else do we move these things? Well, a couple more ways. The second way, is through gravity. <laughs> gravity, okay, well, that's beneficial for one region of your body. Could you guess which region would use gravity more often than not? Well, probably the upper neck and head area will drain down, right, to the subclavian vein, so gravity's beneficial to drain those areas, right? But for the toe, <laughs> gravity's not gonna help unless you put your feet up, right? So gravity does play a role. And this makes sense, you know, because all of us have grandparents, right? And a lot of the times when we look at our grandparents' ankles and feet, a lot of the times they're a little swollen, right? They've got a little bit of edema. Now, why do you think that would be? Well, it's because gravity is pulling that fluid back down this way and it's backing up and backing up until we get too much fluid in the interstitium, thus causing edema. Now, the reason for that is because these smooth muscle contractions get weaker as you get older. That's a natural part of aging. But also, we live a little more sedentary. We sit too much when we get older. One of the main ways we move lymph is actually through skeletal muscle contractions. All right, now, how does that work? Well, if we were to look at basically any lymphatic vessel, there's usually a skeletal muscle surrounding it. So it may look something like this. So here are your skeletal muscles basically surrounding a lymphatic vessel. And remember, the lymphatic vessels have those one-way valves. 
So there's basically only one way the lymph can go, and that is that direction. If it gets forced through, it'll stay pushing up that way. So what's fascinating is when the skeletal muscles contract, that will push inward onto those lymphatic vessels, and it'll compress the vessels, forcing the fluid to go in that one-way direction, once again, back towards the subclavian vein. So if you're moving those legs, pumping those feet, you're contracting skeletal muscles, drawing the lymph back upwards, and that's really important as you get older. Awesome. Now the last way that we can move lymph is actually by imitating skeletal muscle contractions through massage. As you massage, you want to remember to massage the muscles back towards basically the heart, but the subclavian veins in particular. So if you're massaging arms, massage upward, massage upwards on the legs and so forth and so on. So this holiday season or next holiday season, whenever the heck you're watching this video, give your grandparents or parents or whatever older people are in your life and give them a nice lymphatic massage so that we don't get edema in their bodies. Now, a quick clinical connection here. You've likely gone to the doctor, right? And the doctor probably told you to subscribe to Organized Biology first, if he or she is a good doctor. But then after subscribing to Organized Biology, then he would ask if you have a cold or symptoms of a cold and be like, yeah, I'm coughing all the time, right? <laughs> the first thing they will likely do is they'll touch your neck. They'll touch your neck and they'll be feeling for something. What is that something? Swelling. Now, can you predict if you have a sickness in this region, why are you going to swell down here? Take a look at the board. Well, it's because if you have an infection in your upper neck and head, which is usually sinus infections, those types of things, all of that lymph is going to have to drain downwards, hit those lymph nodes, and what's going to happen at the lymph nodes? A crazy battle for the ages, right? They're going to have a ton of bacteria forced through those lymph nodes, and the white blood cells are going to be like, whoa, 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 we got to kill these suckers because they're going to hurt us. So all of a sudden, all these white blood cells are going to converge on the bacteria in that region, thus swelling the lymph node as cells die and pus is produced and all this gross stuff, right? So that's why they're feeling for swelling in the lymph nodes, okay? And a great tip you can do just to help yourself out is massage yourself downwards during that time. It helps you drain that lymph out. Awesome. Now, one last thing with the lymphatic system. Not only does it reclaim lost fluid, clean that stuff out from pathogens and that type of thing, but it also helps you absorb fats. You see, you absorb any dietary fat that you've brought into your body through the lymphatic system. So if we were to zoom in specifically on the intestinal lymphatic tract, okay, it's going to zoom in. We're going to see these intestinal cells right here. And their goal is to basically absorb as much nutrients as possible. So as you see, they've got these little microvilli, and they're going to pull that nutrient back through the cells into either the capillaries, the blood supply itself, or into what's called lacteals. Now, lact refers to milky, okay? So these are actually lymphatic vessels that look milky under the microscope. Now, why do they look milky? Well, it's shown that the lacteals are specialized to absorb fats. So if you have any sort of dietary fat right here, they'll actually pass right through the cell, but they're too big to actually fit into that capillary. So instead, it reroutes and pops into these lacteals. So now that you have the fats and the lacteals, where do you think they're going to go? Well, once again, it's going to go back up, 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 up into the subclavian vein. Now, why do you think that would be important rather than just dumping all the fat that you eat into your blood supply immediately? Well, you've probably heard before that if you have too much fat or cholesterol, that type of stuff in your bloodstream, it can actually clog up those arteries, those vessels. And that could be bad. So instead, your body says, whoa, 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 we're going to take the fats. We're going to slowly, slowly reintroduce them into your blood supply, right? So that we don't just jack up your blood full of fat immediately, right? It makes sense. And last but not least, there are three major structures of your body that I haven't discussed that are also a part of the lymphatic system, one of which will be the bone marrow. So your bone marrow produces all of your blood cells, including your red blood cells, which I drew here, but also your white blood cells, which are chilling in here, the lymphocytes, the other leukocytes, like basophils and eosinophils, that type of thing. But specifically talking about the T cells, once the T cells are produced, they're very immature. They don't really know what to do. They're basically like a child who doesn't know what the heck they're doing. So they need to go through training. And where do they do that training? They do it at an organ called the thymus. Now, the thymus is basically a little hat on top of the heart. It's very glandular, so it looks kind of spongy. And this is basically the boot camp for T cells. This is where they're going to learn what cells are friend, what cells are foe. And if they do poorly, they actually get 
killed. Uh, so it's very much Hunger Games style. Um, but anyway, when they do get matured, they're going to hop into the blood supply again and basically hang out at lymph nodes ready to detect those nasty pathogens based on their training. So now, once we have those matured, the thymus is actually no longer needed. So at about age 12 to 14, your thymus degenerates pretty rapidly because at that point, your immune system is already set. You don't need a boot camp anymore. So you all, if you're over the age of, I don't know, 16 to 18, you don't have a thymus. So next up, we've got the spleen. This is also considered a part of the uh, lymphatic system because it's basically like a glorified lymph node, but instead of actually draining lymph directly, it's getting a direct blood supply. So as the blood filters through the spleen, which is about upper left retroperitoneal, kind of near the back of your abdominal cavity, and it's about a fist size, once it gets that blood, it's going to recycle some of the red blood cells, the ones that are tired out and worn out need to be recycled, as well as helping to basically just kill off pathogens if they get into your bloodstream as well. So next up, check out my review video on the cardiovascular system to help understand this as a part of a whole.